what I found was really invaluable learning from se- several of your episodes and your master classes that you share is, you know, bring that add on value to that follow up instead of just having that repeatedly checking in. Here is my information in case you have any questions, which, you know, I'm guilty of charge. That's what I was doing for the longest time ever. Just, you know, making a very um, kind of boring in a way that conversation where I felt I was talking to myself. All right, everyone, I'm so excited to have someone who is a part of our PR community tell you her story about how she took her story into her own hands after trying all the things, paid ads, influencers, giving away free samples. Jessica Santander, based in Florida, she is an incredible woman. She basically left her corporate career um, and decided that she wanted to pursue art. So she started her jewelry line called Santander Designs, and uh, she will be talking all things PR, marketing, what's worked, what didn't work, and how you can make it work for you. So welcome to the show. Yay. Thanks, Gloria. It's such a dream in the making right here this moment to be able to speak with you, share my experience with your incredible community. I am just so excited and ready to get things rolling. So you said that you started your company basically just in your house, right? You bought beads without a business plan. You kind of just put it, put it together. So how do you get such a tiny business where you're literally just you know, it's a labor of love, a hobby. How do you get it out there into the world? What have you tried? And tell me the journey of that. Yeah, absolutely. So I love how you say it's definitely a labor of love. And that's just truly been the reminder every day with what helps me to keep going. So, I mean, Tampa Bay definitely is a growing, thriving city. And throughout the past four years, which we are four years in business, we've seen small business community here locally really step into and bringing greater awareness. So since day one, you know, with building our collections right here in our little office with my puppy dog going all over the place, it's definitely you know, a, a whole world of its own where there is never two days that are alike. And I'm just, I'm so blessed to be able to share my passion, these creations of art with our local community. So we do that through a ton of local markets that are truly, truly so much fun. I absolutely love engaging with our customers, getting to meet new faces, getting to hug our familiar repeat customers all over around the city. And also nowadays you have to rely on digital. So as you consistently share, not throw all your eggs in one basket. So yes, we're doing Instagram, but we're also doing email marketing. We're also doing collaboration. So it's just a little bit of trying everything and seeing what works. And for us, it's just really repeatedly sharing the story essence behind our pieces and really speaking to our customers who are going to resonate with that, both in person and online. Yeah, I love that you said you started off in the local markets. We have so many PR Starter Pack members who just started there. And then from getting the feedback from your customers, you're starting to see what works and what doesn't. And I always say that like getting that feedback is so invaluable. You have to keep getting feedback. Same thing with pitching. So I want to pitch, I want to basically pivot a little bit. You've done all the things, right? So Instagram, obviously you have a little bit of digital marketing experience because you you had a corporate career in that. Tell me all the methods you have tried to get your brand out there. That, that's not local market. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, fortunately, my background is with marketing and that was my first full time job. So digital marketing was where I was stepping into my experience um, for about several months. And, you know, I just wanted to apply immediately those tools and skill sets from my corporate job into you know, growing that brand awareness. So I've definitely tried, you know, paid ads, both with Facebook, Instagram and Google. And um, it's just, you know, really, it it makes a whole world of a difference when you know what you're doing versus what you're trying. And it's just been an experience where I have been able to acknowledge that, you know, definitely outsourcing or being able to learn from your mistakes where there has been definitely improvements with the ways that our own digital marketing has been evolving. Um, but I personally love the very fact of just influencer collaborations. I mean, that's just something that I, I try to connect on a personal basis and just build that relationship with that other person on that screen, whether we're local or not local. And just overall, at the end of the day, having fun, having fun to be able to tell our story with others and build our community together that will eventually be a long haul relationship. So you told me before we got on here, you said you did paid ads and paid micro influencers. Can you tell me about those results? And then kind of how did you decide to do the organic PR pitching instead? Yeah, so paid ads, that was where 
it was more of um, a desperate call to action on my end where I'm like, you know, let's just give it a shot. Let's see, you know, what can happen. What could be the worst that can happen? We're just, you know, we're, we have a fixated amount that I wanted to invest in. And I mean, when you really don't have a full understanding and you're just trying like what the famous thing is of throwing spaghetti on the walls, that is where things can get a little bit shaky. So in my own experience, it's definitely been a hard, challenging one, trying to understand what is lacking to have that positive ROI. So, you know, we had a few website visits through our Instagram ads and um, Google ads as well, a few newsletter signups, but um, there was no positive ROI. So, you know, that's where you get impatient. And, that, you know, from marketing guru, gurus as yourself, Gloria, they're saying, you know, paid ads is definitely a long time game. You can't just stop. If you're going to invest, you have to commit at least six months. And me being very, you know, I'm a very impatient person, I'm, I personally and professionally. So I just stopped and I'm like, okay, there has to be another way to do this without even throwing money out the window. So came you, Gloria, with your podcast. And I actually found you through a friend of mine who also is a product-based business. And I cannot recall on the top of my mind right now her name, but she's a beautiful soul. And we started following me at the same time. I think it was at the end of 2021 or beginning first quarter of 2022. And um, that's where I just was, I felt something intrigued. I'm like, okay, this is a whole new sense of clarity that she's bringing for the game, for PR and having this organic outreach. And just how the way you mapped it out, Gloria, it just really brought a whole new sense of relief as if, you know, imagine you're opening up a window in a new home and you just feel that first time that breeze coming in. So I was just like, oh my goodness, this is definitely what can really be thought of in terms of organic pitching. It doesn't have to be a dreadful experience. And that's what you helped me experience through it all. Wow. So we're going to talk about exactly how you, you cracked the code on this. Obviously you watched the masterclass, right? For anyone who's yep. who's listening, you can go to GloriaChowPR.com slash masterclass to find the same one. And then um, you'll learn, you learn the CPR method. How did you get started? But actually before that, let's talk about your wins <laughs> because yeah. I didn't even know until I, until you told me and I checked in with you, tell me about your wins with just using the CPR method organically. Yeah. It's so funny. And this is why I also love Instagram, you know, just, you know, building that relationship and you're checking in on friends and so um, after literally, Gloria, a year of no media placements organically, what I've done for, for media placements has all been organically, whether through influencers or through um, public or published or even TV editorials. Um, it was a whole year. So 2021 up until November of last year, um, where we had no, I've been trying pitching. So given, you know, the last few several months i was using your tactic and we within one month we landed on buzzfeed for their holiday gift guide we landed as well on women's health magazine for a holiday gift guide as well and we also had a very fun organic collaboration with kittenish the brand as a giveaway as well so three major wins in like a very short time frame where it just honestly goes to show that clarity, precision and focus, and just having that guidance and community as your masterclass, it can really bring things into existence. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is wild. BuzzFeed is, I, they have like, what, 70 million people? It, on just, I, I can't even count. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, so that's, 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 first of all, that's amazing. Um, BuzzFeed yeah. is probably one of the harder ones to get on because a lot of the stuff they do is also paid. So it gets a little murky right. with like affiliates. And I think a lot of people, because PR kind of gets a bad rep, we've been told for decades, you have to pay to play that when I teach my classes, they're still like, oh, well, I still have to do something. But you're basically saying you didn't have to do affiliate commission. You didn't have to send a ton of samples. So well, let's walk us through how you got onto BuzzFeed, which is one of the top websites visited by your audience, arguably one of the top three websites for your audience. Yes. I mean, it all goes back to your, I mean, truly all your podcast episodes, everyone has to just give it a listen, pay attention to the details. They are golden nuggets. So just really taking in, you know, the, in terms of what are my key takeaways is bringing that pitch. So it's already a pitch itself for the, the reporter, the journalist. And so just mapping out, you know, how would I already have this laid out for a, a gift guide? 
So that entails, you know, having the bullet points, not having everything overdraft. And that was where my weakness was before I started listening to your tactics, Gloria, was I'm definitely an overwriter. I put too many words where it can definitely just be one sentence. So really just, you know, cutting off, you know, what's not needed in the body and also having that subject line as the golden envelope to have that um, journalist or freelance writer open it up. And so that was just really what I had done. I mean, it, it does sound simple, but it can be simple as you share, Gloria. Truly, that's what really blew my mind. It truly can be simple to get featured on such an incredible platforms. And so just I pitch, you know, three certain products where I felt would make a beautiful at the moment gift, but even in the long haul, presenting what I feel makes us unique as a jewelry brand in comparison to others out there, as well as, you know, a little bit of um, highlights to our small business. So we highlighted that we are Latina owned, female founded and a small business where I'm the solopreneur. So we have only one employee in our business. And so that's what she took. And um, yeah, within November, that was when the month um, we got featured and going back, I think in terms of numbers, we had over close to 2000 website visits in one week, which was an epic milestone for our business. <laughs> oh my God. And you said that you did paid ads and how many, how many website traffic did you get from? Oh, paid? I mean, in comparison, it was just very, very subtle. So let's say, you know, within a week of paid ads, maybe we had an extra 10 website visitors a oh day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so week of paid ads, 10 website visitors, uh, getting featured in BuzzFeed, 2000 website visits in one week plus SEO for life. Right. Exactly. For life. That is golden. That's amazing. So were you able to like leverage that and turn that into sales and engage your email list? Yeah, definitely. So immediately when I found out that we had our um, online publication already on BuzzFeed, I did all that you share. So that is go ahead, you know, make, we made a reel and I did that in that night. And then also, you know, reading, reusing that into a week after still a small business highlight for the holidays and also our email list and sharing it, you know, through our um, email list, pr primarily also with our wholesalers. So something that they could share with their customers as a small business highlight um, as they carry our products in their stores too. I love that. I think a lot of people don't realize, they think PR is in a silo where it's like, it just helps to get more eyeballs, but it helps with everything. If you want to seek investors or not, if you want to get into a wholesale or not, if you want to speak on the panel or not, it all kind of compounds, right? The fact that you were able to use PR and by the way, not ads, you know, I'm not going to be like, Hey, I, I ran an ad. Let me speak on your panel. Right. But you can do that with PR. And that's, what's mm -hmm. so amazing. And now you're going to, you know, one of the biggest trade shows. Um, and you can say to every single customer that walks by, you're going to meet thousands of people and say, check us out in BuzzFeed and in Women's Health. So let's get it into the nitty gritty of how you actually found the journalist contact and what was a mm -hmm. follow up? Because, you know, I teach a very specific mm -hmm. follow up in my PR starter pack. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, consistently is definitely the number one thing to keep in mind. And so this was about almost the end of um, the summer that I started reaching out. And it's just, you know, a follow-up game where you have to have those reminders, especially for ones that you really want to keep that relationship in their memory. So um, just having that once a week, bi-weekly reminder. And what I found was really invaluable learning from se several of your episodes and your master classes that you share is, you know, bring that add-on value to that follow-up instead of just having that repeatedly checking in here is my information in case you have any questions, which, you know, I'm guilty of charge. That's what I was doing for the longest time ever. Just, you know, making a very um, kind of boring in a way, that conversation where I felt I was talking to myself. But the post of that brought that extra value. So, you know, with new collections, new designs coming up for the holidays or any extra holiday promos that they could also utilize or even something to the point where, hey, you know, we as our jewelry brand is very storytelling oriented, we also have these moments that are actually based in categories. So we have our mother daughter's relationship categories that, you know, can also be a very um, specific and unique add on to a gift guide. So mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, was part of this particular pitch repeatedly. And especially the fact that for us small business owners, 
always keep emphasizing what you think is valuable from your business. What is it that you ever present your values being your core values being your, um, your ethnicity being your, your backstory, that all is very, very important that, you know, the freelancers and the journalists are all going to take into consideration whether now or for another pitch in, later in the future. Yeah. So you watch the masterclass, use a CPR method, and listen, we all got to start off with our, I want to say, shitty few drafts, right? I've had thousands of shitty drafts, thousands of cold calls. That's how I came up with my CPR method. Now, luckily, if you watch this, the masterclass, you don't have to maybe do a thousand. You'll, you'll be a lot closer. <laughs> so let's say so you watch the class, you wrote a couple drafts, you started shaving away at it so that it's really tight and concise, right? I always say it takes yes. more expertise and skill to communicate in shorter sentences. That is a skill mm -hmm. that we are building. So now that you've mastered the skill... How many times did you follow up and did you follow up on social media as well? Did you comment on this journalist like posts? Yeah. So for me, I, for at least this um, BuzzFeed feature and women's health, it was just primarily through email and really just in the spam of a month. Um, I don't know if it was because really just it was the holidays and maybe the holiday season is definitely one of those top priorities for a lot of editorials. Um, but just in a month time frame, and as you shared, just keeping everything concise and very, um, communicative in a way that's just going to be clear and transparent and easier for that writer to just grab paste and make that publish happen. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So, so, so you did, you know, I, I think following up, I think refreshing your subject lines, another great way, especially if you're in product, here's a hack for you is let's say you send a few emails, you don't get response and a celebrity or an influencer wore something that's similar, whether it's a trend or a style. Yeah. And you can say, well, recently Rihanna wore this to this. Or recently, like if you make jewelry, you can say, recently, like this celebrity got engaged and it's this type of ring, right? So we do have a, you know, I just wrote a pitch for someone in the PR Cyber Pack like that. It's another way to bring relevance. Always think about the wow. seasons as well, whether it's holidays, Valentine's, Galentine's, mother, daughter, prenatal, post, pre like there's so many different things in your collection. And I think a lot of founders, they get overwhelmed because they're so used to sending an order form of here are all the 60 or 70 items. And they're talking mm -hmm. to the journalist, like they're their customer, but mm -hmm. the journalist is not going to buy from you. So right. what was a mental, um, how did you get over that hump of speaking so well about selling yourself, but then having to translate that marketing message into one that positions you not as a seller, but as an industry expert, as someone who understands trends? I mean, it's just really building up that confidence muscle at the end of the day. And, you know, for me, I, I just, I love picking in on insights from podcasts. So Gloria, I mean, just hearing your interviews with other freelancers and journalists, what they're looking for, and just taking these little takeaways and making those reminders. So it's really practice, practice, practice. And until I felt comfortable, like I had several, I still do have a folder and have several pitch, you know, templates and then just fixing it till I feel comfortable and feel as how you shared you're speaking directly in the language and respecting the time of that freelancer that journalist so I mean it, it did take a lot of practice and for me it took almost a year but hey for others it could just be within you commit a whole week just focus on that and you could be you know getting your way into a huge you know, beautiful feature for your business too yeah 100 percent. obviously we have like 40 50 different types of pitches in the starter pack. You can yeah. see every single pitch that I wrote. But I really want to tap upon what you said is the time thing. I think so many people think this takes time. This is hard. And I'm just going to do reels and paid ads. But I always, in, in every um, monthly call with my members, I show them this chart of the $10 an hour tasks that you can delegate and the $10,000 an hour skills that will take you so far in life, which is what you've honed in on. Now, you said it takes a year. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth it because the ability to tell your message with clarity and relevance and get that yes from another person, that is a priceless skill that will serve you all throughout your life. You know, TikTok could be banned tomorrow. Your Instagram could be hacked. The algorithm might not like you. That is really not a skill, right? Because you're, you're playing in someone else's arena. But knowing how to clarify our message, Jessica, I'm so proud that you've done the hard work to actually hone in on a skill that no one can steal from you. It doesn't matter what happens in the market. This is a skill you're going to have for life. Oh, thank you, Gloria. I mean, this is all because of what you're you're doing for us, you know, helping the product based service based businesses. It's not easy. And especially you know, for solopreneurs, it can be very hard if you're trying to do everything on your own. So I mean, with what you're sharing, both through your masterclasses and through your PR packages, I mean, it's just, 
it really helps us to just, you know, have that acknowledgement that, hey, you know, we can do this, but even more so we have that helping hand from you. So, I mean, truly it's all, you know, from incredible souls as yourself. So I thank you for the, for the help and the guidance to get us to where we're at. Well, thank you for also shining a light on other people with your art and your story. So we're all, that's the work we're called to do. So talking about kind of honing in and organization, I think a lot of people get so overwhelmed with like, they, they say like, okay, well, how do I keep track of the people that I'm, you know, contacting and how do, how many pitches should I start with? Do I start with one seasonal, one podcast? Like how did you go around, like, um, figure out what was the first step to take? Yeah, I mean, it just goes to your goal, whether it be for that quarter. So for me personally, I, at least with product based and jewelry, you know, a major season and one of our best quarters to sell is going to be the holiday. So quarter three into quarter four. And so I just, you know, made that commitment at least a couple of times a week, re strategizing what it is that I want to be presenting, what it is I'm going to be pitching, and how are we going to do so? So just having, as you said, organization can look and feel in so many different ways for so many of us. But for me personally, I just love having that Google Doc and having those particular writers and those platforms that I know I can be featured, that it is possible, even if it's organic. So just having those top three to top 10 A-list people that you really want to build that relationship and just go for it. You know, don't, don't let that, um, you know, what I call, I know is very relatable imposter syndrome get in the way because you are your only potential of what you can share with others. So that for me is just, you know, okay, it's a new day. You have this pitch, let's go for it. You have this new value to share. You have this new fun fact to share. So just, you know, think outside the box, be creative, be fun and be passionate when you are doing these follow-ups, when you are presenting your, your, your dream for these writers as well. Yeah. I I think what trips a lot of people up is they're like, well, I don't want to be too salesy, but that's what the beauty of the CPR method is, is you're talking about trends, what's great, what the colors, like what it invokes. You know, Pantone just released their color of the year and that says something very bold to us, mm-hmm. right? So I, I think as long as you know that you're serving and again, all of us entrepreneurs, right? You didn't just build this company and leave your corporate job because you wanted to have a get rich quick scheme. You really mm-hmm. loved what you did. And so mm-hmm. a lot of times it's just peeling back the layers and tapping back into why did we start this company? Why did we do this? Why did we do the candle business? Why are, why did I leave my you know prestigious job in the medical field to become a consultant, right? All of those things tap into our why. And then Everything else just flows. I love what you said about Mm -hmm. Google Docs. Maybe start with one to two pitches. If you are a product owner, again, gift guides, like what you did is perfect, right? What is the one item that's great for the season that's coming up in the next 30 to 60 days, whether that's Valentine's, whether that's graduation, New Year's, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? And maybe another pitch about your founder story. So what have you learned scaling your business and trying out all the different e-commerce platforms? Maybe it's something about Shopify versus Etsy, right? All of those things. I think at any one point you have a multitude of angles, you but you have to pick the one that's most relevant for this season. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole world of stories that you can share just on yours. And as I always appreciate, you always share this reminder is you do have a story to tell. You have a story that's impactful, each and every one of us. And so just have fun with it. It is worth telling. It's worth sharing. And it's just something that I love that you reemphasize because it really, personally, I take it as a sign to keep going. Well, you got to keep going because you're already on your way. So you didn't get this far <laughs> just to get this far. So I want to talk more about, okay, so you got, you got, they, you sent the email out. Did you attach like, a Dropbox link with like high quality photos? Did you offer to send samples? How did that go? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So I definitely included all those links. So we included a link to our website so they could take a look at just our homepage or bio, as well as the website link to the actual product so they can get an overall understanding of, you know, the details and the photography, as well as a Dropbox link to the actual product image so they can have it, you know, whether they needed it on their end for their desktop. Um, so those, you know, just like convenient one click access, so they don't have to be, you know, burning around They're like, where do I go? How do I find more information? And always, you know, at least with product based um, businesses definitely offer 
you know, here I am. Here's my samples. If you want anything, um, I always say, you know, just share what your bracelet size is and we can get that going, make it happen. It would be a true honor to share our work of art with you. So just, you know, reemphasizing that you are, you're generally interested in sharing your, your love, your labor of love with this other writer, with this other person so that they can also experience it for themselves. So just having those, um, you know, that close off at the end of the email, something um, that they could look forward to. So did you give samples to get onto BuzzFeed and Women's Health? So for those two, I have not. Um, well, I am movie. shocked. I want to stop you right yeah. there because I think a lot of people <laughs> get, get swindled by these quote unquote journalists who are not really journalists. They're influencer bloggers looking for free merchandise. And so if you're out there, we're looking for you. And I already got some DMs from people in my starter pack that's like, hey, like this person just keeps asking for samples and like, and ghosts me. And I'm like, okay, so now we have a rate. Mm -hmm. So there's, this is happening. What I'm trying to say is you don't ever have to give free merch to get featured. So just like Jessica is telling you right now, she got on Buzzfeed and women's health. I don't want you to start off by saying, I have to give away all of my stuff for free just for, to hope that there's a 1% chance, right? That's, mm -hmm. I don't want you to start there. You don't, you don't need to. Now, if you have something that's low cost, you have a sample of your body butter. Sure. If they want to fine. But if you make something like jewelry speakers, like, you know, it, I don't think you really need to give a sample. You can give them instead, like what Jessica did, maybe a behind the scenes, a reel of how they can experience this or what the, the mother daughter collection is like, things like that. So get creative, but you don't have to give away your power. You don't have to give away your resources to get featured. Yeah. And don't let that also fear be a, a fearful factor to keeping you from pressing that send button because that's, you know, beforehand, I was always scared. I'm like, oh my goodness. Because I've had those experiences where I've had to, I pitched to 10 influencers, bloggers, and those 10 did request several samples. So just having, you know, that, that keep that in mind as Gloria shares, you know, just don't let that be a fearful factor because like you see with BuzzFeed Women's Health, there are going to be journalists who say, you know what, I just need those links. That is plenty enough samples. You can keep all your products to yeah. sell for your customers. So it's possible. Yeah. And, and another question is a lot of people, this is very unnatural for them, right? We're not taught to speak up and pitch to media. We're taught that the media is owned by these rich white men who have really deep pockets and connections. So I know it's, it's really hard for us to be a tiny little business uh, and to be like, I deserve to be featured. But like mm -hmm. Jessica says, everything you want is on the other side of the send button. I think I, I also said that. And um, it is our sacred duty to do this because we will never rewrite the image and the narrative of what a small business owner looks like if we don't see ourselves reflected back in media. We have to do this work. We have to do this work. So I'm so happy you're doing this work. Um, I, I think I forgot to ask you about, okay, the, um, the thing about writers, right? So some of them are staff reporters and some of them are um, freelancers. How do you navigate that? And are you going to pitch back to them again? Because for me, I always think, you know, there's an endless um, opportunity. So just mm -hmm. because they write for one outlet, you can be like, hey, I noticed that you also write for these outlets. What else can we co-create? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, both for staff writers and journalists, I will have already, you know, pitched them back for you know, upcoming holiday themes. So just, you know, it never close a door on yourself. You never know what's possible and even like what can happen within a couple months again. So, you know, just always having those follow-ups and, you know, with new seasons or new opportunities, new collections, new collaborations that can take place that so you can share. Hey, this is an incredible win highlight that I think will be a great piece for a Mother's Day or a bride, bride segment. Um, so I just like, I, I always, you know, take into the fact that, you know, whether they are a staff writer or just fixated on one particular platform, it's an incredible opportunity for any small business. And for me, I, I pitched to, to both worlds in that end. Yeah. And when you did pitch, what was the response? They say, get on the phone or they're like, I'm interested, send me some more details over email. Yeah. So I actually, okay. So there were the one for women's health. She, um, I, what I do and that you've shared is, you know, read into their story little fun facts about these these individuals because at the end of the day you know businesses are based on relationships so you have to you have to show that consideration that hey i took my time to learn about you so i shared a common factor between us both where ironically um we used to live in tampa and new york so that was just and we graduated from the same university so that's just sharing you know hey hometown wins there we go um that was one end and then the other they just shared, you know, hey, are you a small business? What are some other core 
pillars that can we highlight for your small business. So no samples were requested, just a uh, one pitch follow up. And they said, well, we're good to go. We'll go ahead and highlight you for the holidays. I mean, it just truly goes to show anything is possible. It can be seamless and it can be fun. You're like, why did I do this earlier? <laughs> yes. I'm like, why did they take a whole year of like writing an essay <laughs> pretty much? That's amazing. So now you know how to use a CPR method. What else are you going to, to do for your business, for your own thought leadership? What are you looking to create this year? Oh, I mean, I definitely love how you emphasize thought leadership. And that's something I, I'm always learning to, to be as, as, a, as a founder for our handmade jewelry brand. So definitely you know, finding ways I can tap into um, more of, of representing our core values of connection, philanthropy, and overall community, both locally and even online. So we have our New York Now trade show coming up um, in February, where I'm very, very excited to just share about our, our mission and why our Julia brand is existing, connect with all my like-minded women, and you know, have, um, have these connections like I share with you, Gloria, and just really be a helping hand for any small businesses yeah. out there. And also, you know, that will reflect our, our overall core values together as well. You know, I always say like the universe only gives you the the problems that you're capable of solving at that level. And I love how you've already overcome the imposter syndrome of where most people get stuck, which is I don't have anything to say. So you've already overcome that. And then when they have something to say, it's like, well, I, I, I'm afraid to be judged. You overcame that by pitching. And now you're focused on so many other bigger problems that you can create so much value in one hour that I really do think that you've really migrated from the $10 an hour task of how do I fix this reel? How do I put a cover on this Instagram? How do I, to like, you're not even thinking about that. You're like, how can mm -hmm. I create, how can I show up? What are the partnerships? What are the relationships? How can I inspire other people? And to just see your journey of elevating your thought, your actions and, and making impact is just inspiring. So I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, thank you so much, Gloria. Is there anything else you want to share with anyone that's listening who maybe does have a small business, handmade jewelry or not, that's just starting and it seems so daunting, this world of PR, right? What do you, what yeah. would you have any encouragement for them to say? Absolutely. And I can definitely relate to them. I still have, you know, these days where I'm just like, what is possible? Am I even able to do this? So, I mean, as we talked about earlier on is just going back to your why and your passion. If you have that spark within you, if you feel just, you know, so motivated when you wake up and go to your business, get your hands dirty and your creative thoughts, it just shows you that, you know, you, you have a story itself right there. Your unique passion is what makes you unique. And there is going to be that person that wants to write about you. So just don't take it too, too hard and don't be too hard on yourself and, just keep going. The passion is there. That's all that's needed. See, that's amazing that you're now shining a light on other people. You're a, really a light on other people. So I'm so proud mm -hmm. of you. I can feel the confidence coming through. I'm so glad that you have the tools and the path ahead of you with clarity. And I cannot wait to see what you create this year. Oh, I cannot wait to share with everyone and also you know, just to immerse myself further in such really vibrant and impactful communities as yours, Gloria. Definitely forward to getting in my foot in there and just, you know, keeping these connections going. So how can people find your jewelry and learn more about you? Yeah. So we have our website. It'll be my name, Jessica Santander.com as well as Instagram. We have an all month long for Valentine's Galentine's perks and promos as well. So self love club. I got you covered there too. <laughs> I love, I love it. I'm on your website now and there's, it's so cute. Ah, thank you. Yeah, yeah we have our self love yeah. bundle too. So that's something fun. Too, and what I love about your website is that since you took matters into your own hands and started to use the methods, there's an ass seen in, and you have a whole line of all the mm -hmm. logos BuzzFeed, Women's Health, Channel 4, New York, Tampa Bay Times. I imagine that in 30 or 60 days, that is going to keep going. You're going to have way oh. more press logos. Oh, that's a dream. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for thank being you. on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Gloria. And I hope that, you know, our community together will be able to take away some key insights and get that pitch going.